All right, good morning and welcome once again. In today's video, I want to show us um, how to cut a female senator. But then, before we proceed, I would like us to know the areas of measurement which I have written on the board. And these areas are one for the top, you have the bust, you have the shape, you have the shoulder, you have the sleeve length, be it long sleeve or uh, short sleeve, you have the round sleeve, the day round sleeve, you have the neck and the top length. That's for the top. Then for the trouser, we have the waist, we have the hips, we have the laps, we have the knee, we have the ankle, and the trouser length. Now, bear in mind that there will be no need for you to use underbust. For those of us that already know how to measure, the same measurement procedures is what we are going to use in, me in measuring our customer. Now, the only thing you need to note is that there will be no need for you to use your underbust in cutting the top of your female senator. You make use of the bust, shape, shoulder, sleeve length, trans sleeve, neck and top length. And then the trouser, make use of the waist, the hips, the lap, the knee, ankle and the trouser length. So these are the areas of measurement. And then the measurement procedures are the same method you use in measuring a normal female outfit. So right here, I will go ahead to fix my values on my measurements. I am now show you how to cut the... We start with the trouser first and then after the trouser video what comes next is the top and uh, how to cut the top so we are going to learn how to cut the trouser followed by the top so right here we have our waist to be 36 hips of 44 laps of 25 knee of 17 ankle of 13 and a half the trial length of 40. now before we proceed we have we all need to know that we have two types of trousers in a female outfit we have the one we call the high waist trouser and the normal waist trouser so I will give you the formula which we use to derive either your high waist or your normal waist trouser before we proceed to the cutting processes. So right here, um, one of the major differences between a normal waist trouser and the high waist trouser is the crouch. Now, how then do you differentiate um, the crouch? What you just have to do is when your customer signifies or indicates what she wants, if she's going for a normal waist trouser, how to get the crouch is hips over 4 minus 1 for the normal waist trouser. Then for the high waist trouser, what you are going to do is hips over 4 plus... Now, the point of the highway, because the highway still um, we determine, we, we differ because some will want it to be too high, some will, to, some will want it to be too... Um, or to be normal. So whatever, um, um, high, however high she wants it to be, you are the one to measure from the point of the point she wants to be high to her normal waist. Get the difference, you add it to the um, crouch hip measurement by 4 plus, whatever you, the difference is. For example, if norm, normally now, normal high waist should have been 2 inches to 3 inches, right? But then, some might want it to be higher than this. So whatever you get as a difference from the point of a high waist to her normal waist, add it to the hips of a 4 plus. Um, hips over 4 plus whatever you measure for if it was to be a normal high waist depending on how high she wants it to be if it's going to cut across the navel you you should know that it should be more than 3 but if it's going to be a bit on the navel it should not be more than 2.5 or 3 inches so right here if you have a high waist trouser you are the one to measure the point the difference from the high waist point to the, to the waist remaining to the balance of the waist now Add the difference to the crouch, whatever you divide by the hip by four. So, um, if we, I'm going to work on this normal trouser now, I'm going to make use of my um, let's make use of um, a normal waist trouser so that we understand the basic first before we proceed. I'll still explain this in cutting when I'm cutting to show us um, how to go about the high waist, should in case you don't understand this. So, let's get down to the marking processes. Yeah. We mark two inches here. These two inches we serve as the hem allowance, right? The hem allowance, you mark two inches here. So you extend your lines right here, two inches. It's a normal measurement, right? Now, the next thing you're gonna do now is to apply the trotter length, which is 40. Length of 40, you apply it 40 trotter length, 40 trotter length, 40. Then you get your um waistline now this is your waistline but then from there you extend your line as well you extend the line then when you have gotten your waistline 
Now the next thing you're going to battle with is your crouch line. Like I told us, we are doing a normal waist trouser. So the, the hips here, the hips here is 44 over 4. It's giving me um, 11, right? Then minus 1 is going to give me 10. That means her crouch is 10 inches. So you mark 10 from the waist line. You bring 10 inch down. So here is her crouch, 10 inch down. Then you extend the line. Make sure it's straight. Extend the line. Now the next thing you're going to do now is making use of your standard measurements on the board. You have what you call 7, 11, 21. 7 for pockets, 11 for flap, 21 for knee. Right here, already we have got used 10 as our crowd, as our flap or crouch. Then um, that means in each of these conventional rules, you are subject to either adjust, increase, um, or um, retain the measurement. So for my customer now, her actual flap is 10 from the formula I used to um, um, work it out. And then I just had to use... So I just had to use my hip by 4 minus 1 to get my flap of 10, right? So now in the subsequent um, areas like the knee now, I'm not going to retain the um, knee measurement of waist to knee as 21. Now these things, are you are subject to, you are prone to measure them on your customer. But in the case whereby you did not measure, you can still manipulate them on your own. So for my customer now, I will use hips, um, waist, to hips or, uh, waist to knee of um, 20. Or 19 I'm going to use 19 for her right so 19 is what I'm going to use for the length of 40 so from the west point from the west point I'm marking 20 for my customer oh, sorry 19 is what I decided to use 19 for my customer west to knee is 19 now I extend the line normal you can still use 21 if you so wish but then um, depending on the length you have so 21 is what I used now here right here we have our waistline at the topmost side and we have our hip line or our, our, our crouch line and then we have our um, lap line or the knee line then we have our ankle line I don't know if the chalk is visible enough or uh, let me use blue to see if it's visible enough right here I have changed my chalk to blue so that it will be visible to all of you, right? So, sorry for the previous markings, right? So I said, um, this is the waist line, this is the um, um, hip line, or the, sorry, or the crash line, the crash line, and this is the knee line, and then the ankle line down. So the next thing you're going to do now, is you come on the ankle line, come on the ankle line, then you mark, I'm going to use two inches here. My, mark two inches inwards on the ankle line, two inches inwards on the ankle line, two inches then come on the knee line mark 1.5 inches on the knee line 1.5 on the knee line come on the west line mark 1.5 as well bear in mind we have not started applying the measurements we are just trying to get the hip curve or the curving nature of a feminine trouser so when you mark those inches make use of your hip curve now connect from your west line to your Hip, hip line with a curve in this form, right? Make use of a hip curve, connect to this line, and then use this as well. Make sure you face the curve inside, the recovery area inside, so that you do not have any popping up at the sides. So connect it in this form, connect in this form, and then in this form then bring your straight line ruler connect from this point to the ankle so we are just trying to get the curvature of a feminine shape so right here we have gotten the curvature then you can use your curve as well to fine-tune this edge so that it will, it will be synchronized right you can fine-tune it this way so this is just to make it look nice. So after you must have done that, the next thing we are going to do now is to start applying our measurements. Our knee, our ankle is 13 and a half. I will do it 14. 
then 14 by 2 is 7 then plus one inch or half an inch depending on what you want to do since since it's um 13 and a half plus one i'm going to mark a seven and a half seven and a half right the ankle by two plus one so the next thing you're going to mark now is the um knee the knee is 17 um 17 is um 8.5 8.5 plus one is um 9.5 you mark at 9.5 then the next thing you're going to mark now is the hip. Hip, hip is um, 44. 44 by 4 is 11. 11. Then you mark extra 2 inches. These 2 inches is constant. It's a standard measurement. Now, make sure the lines you are marking is cutting up, coming across the line this way. So right now, the next thing you're going to do now is the um, hip. Sorry, the waist. 36 by... Um, four is nine inches, right? You mark nine. You mark nine inch plus extra one. Plus extra one. Then you can as well use half if you so wish. So right here, you are done with the connections. What you have to do is you join this line in this form. Join this line in this form. Now, in most cases, if you notice that your line is bent, you can increase your hip a bit so that it will synchronize properly without having much stress on you. So after you have done that, then you raise your trouser two inches up. This two inches is your hip point, your hip point, which you can as well draw across or you can leave it there. And then from the intercepts, mark half an inch inwards this way and then make a curve to connect in this form. So after the curve, the next thing you're going to do now is to use your hip curve, connect the line from the lap area to your um, hip area, to your crotch area, connect the line this way, and then bring your straight line ruler, raise it up a bit, raise it up a bit, and then use your hip curve to finish it up. Then this is um, for the front block. And then the next thing I'm going to do now is the slanting, the waist slanting. The waist slanting is half an inch, half inch, 0 0.5, half an inch. Now you take it down to the tip of the pocket area. Right here, we have the slanting line applied. Next I'm going to do now is the pocket. The pocket is not a regular masculine-like pocket. We're going to make a curvy pocket right here. So you mark from the slant um, from your waist um, beginning to two and a half inch inwards two and a half inch inwards from this waist line you can mark um, 6.5 or 6 I'm going to make use of um, 6 inches right 6 inches so from here you make a curve you make a curve connecting to this point right this place is going to go off I will show you how to do this in the coupling processes so right here we are done with the front body or the front block of our trouser this is the shape the waist line the crotch line the knee line and the ankle line so this is the shape or the nature of your trouser and then i will cut this out now and then show you um, how to cut the back so right here we are done cutting the front trouser and um, i've i have Folded my material again and um, draw my material and I want to cut the back. Now, right here in a feminine trouser, since you have cross-checked your measurements, um, the lapse is 25 by 2 is um, 12.5. The lapse is still inside the crouch line and then the knee is already applied, uh, which is um, um, 18. We, have, we use 18 to cut and the ankle is, is already there. So what you have to do is from the back crouch, you extend the line in this direction. You extend the line in this direction. And then you mark two inches here. Two inches, right? You must mark two inches. Then at the back area, the waist line, you raise it up by two inches as well. So that it will not be a low waist trouser for your customer. Raise by two. Raise by two. Then after the raising, you connect the line you connect the line in this form 
take it down to the tip of the trouser and then on the waist area on the waist this is two inches right two inches here then on the waist area here you mark 1.5 then coming down a bit to the crouch you mark two inches then with the help of your hip curve with the help of your hip curve you connect from the um, measurements you have already indicated connect and make a curve and lap on the um, crash line then the next thing you're going to do now is you add two inches at the side on the sides so two, two inches you, got, you can use them 1.5 so your allowances will not be much 1.5 is ideal since you add one inch on the lap area on the um, knee area so 1.5 1.5 is very much okay right 4.5 is very much okay 1.5 then coming on the ankle area you also add the same 1.5 1.5 is very much okay then make use of your of your hip curve to connect connect from the um one and a half inch if you have added or the two inches depending on what you what you want to use and connect in this form then when you connect in this form you are going to have your marking joints in a gradual process from one of the um, curve points to the lock points until you successfully connect all the points together so this is how the back body of your trouser will look like and then the next thing i'm going to do now is cut it out and then cut out your pocket remember the pocket is in a curvy form i will show you how to cut the pocket and fix it in our um cut in our sewing processes so this is the back body of the trouser the resin was two inches and then um, two inches resin here right two inches and then um the waist area is 1.5 this way coming on the middle of the crouch you mark two inches here and then here was um, two inches 1.5 or two inches all through from here down to the ankle so after you must have done that you now cut your trouser and then proceed to the um, other couple of the trouser which are the band the bed loop the flap and every other aspect of the trouser so i will also show you how to cut all those areas so this is how you are going to replicate all your cuttings right the size of the, the, the other parts are equal um, you have to cut accordingly so right here so right here now we are done cutting the front and back so i want to cut off the pockets remember this was a 2.5 and then um, six inches right or 6.5 six inches is what we use so you have to cut it out this way the both of them right cut them out in this form cut it out i will show you how to fix it when you are coupling your trouser so this is the, the front block of the trouser now for our feminine trouser and having this natural pocket i will show you how to go about this so next thing is to, to show you the components of the trouser all right so now i want to cut the um, the band now the band measurement is 4.5 now this is a direct band there will be no need for you to make any additional band inside of a trouser for your feminine trouser use the same fabric to do the band eat as much as is trouser accept the person request for such you now add extra band inside so 4.5 is the length is the width sorry yeah the length yeah now the width is the person's waistline over two plus extra five so the waistline 36 over two is 18 18 plus five is going to give us um 23 so we can mark at 25 to make sure the band will be enough for the for the trouser so you mark in this form and then you connect in this form as well Connect in this form and then you cut it out. So right here we want to cut the flap. Now the flap for my customer, for my client, I will cut and then tell you the measurements I'm using for her. So right here, make sure that the edge here is straight on. Not be straight, make sure it's very straight, and then the width of your flap will be anything less than three inches so it can be 2.5 2.5 2.5 2.5 2.5 2.5 
2.9 or 3 exact right so from 3 inches is very, very much acceptable width now the length any measurements above 9 inches is will be your measurement so you make sure you cut in a very smooth edge cut in a very smooth edge right so this is the measurement I have now and then I'm marking my measuring this is um, 2.7 by length of um, um, 10.5 right 10.5 so it's very much okay for me so I'm going to cut the um, I've cut the, the, the waist band already which I told us is uh, 4.5 by the length of the person's length um, um, waist length um, measurement plus 5 so this is the band and this is the and for the flap for the zip so you fit them together and then the next thing we're going to cut now is um, for the pocket scene right for the pocket scene remember the kind of pocket we have so i'll also show you how to draft the pocket scene for it so right here um you have your material folded into two in this form and then the measurement i'm using for my pocket scene width and depth is um, 13 inches that's 6.5 this way and then by 13 inches then depth that 13 by 13 wide on fold is 6.5 by 13 right so after you must have done that you connect the line in this form to go down straight and then you draft out or you cut out the pocket scene it's best it's advised to use the same material you use in the trouser to make your pocket scenes so that the pocket scenes will be strong enough using lining might make the lining to, to, to tear and then it will render the trouser useless so after you must have draft out the pocket scene open it up this way right open it up then bring the front trouser bring the front trouser then place the curved part, that pocket side you cut off, place it at one edge of the trouser. Make sure you are placing the curved part of the trouser and not the crouch area. Don't use the crouch to cut it off. Use the curved part of the trouser. Then replicate the cutting on the pocket seam at the one edge of each of the pocket scenes one edge not both ends one edge cut it off this way then while sewing you will now fold the pocket scene and then have it in this form right so you are going to sew from the front of the material and then turn inside i will show you how to go about this in the coupling processes and um, the loop measurement is um, 1.5 width right then by length of 24 because each loop is six inches so and they have six loops in a trouser making it um, um 24 but you can cut more than 24 so that if you have any need for you to um if you have any one missing you can easily pick another one and replace so the loop is 1.5 width by 24. so right here we are done with the loop and this is the loop so the component of the trouser now from the loop to the back block of the trouser um to the front block to the pocket scenes and then to the band then the band and the flap right so if you are making use of the same material as the pocket scene no need to do pocket facing so you don't need to pocket facing but if you're using lining to, or cutting line to do it you have to cut pocket facing so that you place the pocket facing on the straight part of the um, pocket scene so and then before it starts sewing your pocket so this is the or uh, these are the components of a trouser and then bear in mind that in a female trouser there will be no need for you to put the back welt pocket except on request so no need to call the back flap and all those plug placket stuffs so you just have to go straight to gumming and then sewing processes so next video you will see now will now be on the top i have explained to us how to um, um cut our trouser from our measurements i have so i will have to explain the top in the next video and then i pray you all understand this and then carry out your own practicals and show me in the group thank you for watching